Mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. Fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my underground house. It's frightfully nice of you Fox, but no, I'm going to have tea with a Gruffalo. <laughs> oh dear, your kids grow up quick. I miss those days, I really do. Reading stories to them every night and stories like that that are just fun. Anyway, we are here in the deep dark woods and I've cut a massive long piece of hazel here and I'm going to use this to make some tent pegs. But it's not quite a tent, it is actually a tarp which wraps around your hammock and I've been sent this by poor Molly and I am excited to use it. The bad side of it is it weighs 6.6 .6 kilos. So this is why I've actually ditched the pegs that come with it and I've cut this so uh, it's sort of less to sort of carry in your backpack. Although I'm still carrying the weight really, I guess, just carrying this piece of wood. But when you're in the woods, you know, carbon whittle, it's what it's all about. So let's get up, find a place to uh, pitch this hammock tap and uh, we'll see what it's all about. Yeah, this looks good. We've got a few well-established hazel trees here, which means I didn't really need to cut this, but you just never know where you're going to end up. So it's worth taking that time early and having the kit with you that you need. 
But the fact that these have got loads of branches off there that are all strong, I've got lots of pitching options then, so we can work out exactly what's best for this tarp. And we've got a few rocks around, so great for lighting a fire because I've got some really, really nice food to cook. Simple, but lovely. So let's get this massive tarp out and I'll show you exactly how cool it is. Well, let's empty this bag. The first thing, the top of the bag, I always have a little bit of a tarp. So I lay this down and then I can just put all my kit on it so I'm not going to lose it on the forest floor. Great tip is that though, great tip. And the midges are biting, but luckily I've got some arm sleeves so that's going to cover my arms up and I've got a head net so I might be getting them on in a minute. So let's lay all this kit out. Food, I'm excited about the food. Yeah, let's get these arm sleeves on. And these are ace because they're camo. And hopefully, it will just stop the midges biting. And if not, I'm going to uh, pop on a shirt because I cannot stand midges. I should have brought some sort of repellent really, but I just shoved this bag together really quickly. Look at that though, rocking the camo. Yeah, I think the head net's going to go on very quickly as well. Well, already this midge situation is unbearable and I cannot stand midges. I would honestly prefer to wrestle rhinos or swim with hippopotamuses that were well hungry than have midges. So, oh, give it a shake. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do, put a cap on first and then it holds you off your face a little bit. There we go. Pull this tight so they can't get in. Oh, and now, hopefully, they won't annoy me too much. Midges though, honestly. Not even devil spawn, they are the devil. So let's get this tarp out. Now this being fairly weighty, it's also quite a size. But there are reasons for that. So this is made by poor Molly. Uh, it's the Lone Wolf 902 tarp. I think uh, this guy's designed it or something. But if we just unclip this, now you can see it's in sort of a canvas bag because the actual tarp itself is just a massive canvas. So I think it's made of 70% cotton and 30% polyester. I'll write it there if it's any different. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's just a massive, massive sheet this and because of it, it just allows you to have different options of how you can sort of pitch and utilize it. So it's actually kind of clever. It comes with all the sort of guy lines, which strangely are bright white, not green, but at least you can see them at night, which is a bit better. And uh, the best thing about this is you can turn it into an actual hot tent by adding this and get your flu through there and just carry your lightweight stove as well. It also comes with some 550 paracord. So I'm guessing this will just be like a massive ridge line. You can sort of set up with that. And the tent itself needs pegging out. So this is why I brought this uh, piece of hazel with me. And if you're doing the bushcraft thing, I've never carried pegs. There is no point carrying pegs. You might as well just make them while you're out here. So that is going to be my plan. And obviously it saves a little bit of weight carrying the 18 pegs that come with it. And to be fair, they're just plain normal ones that are nothing special. So anyway, let's do the bushcraft thing and get this up. So let's see what we're dealing with. 
have no idea of sizes for this. I don't know what height it needs to go at. Nothing, but this is all the fun about getting out here and trying it out. And if you don't try it for a few times in decent weather, then you never know how easy it's, or hard it's going to be to set up. And then the problem is when you get into bad weather and you need setting up quickly, you struggle. So worth doing this. <laughs> it's absolutely massive. It is huge. So first job with a paracord, I am going to set up a ridge line and then we'll sling it over the top and see how we look. I'm going to guess on a height. I've got the ridge line set up here and I've done it super tight. Just because this weighs quite a lot and it does need to make sure that it's going to hold it in position and not sag too much because I think it'll probably put it out of shape a bit. But it's like a guitar string, look at that. Solid. So we've got these guys to put on now, so I'm going to put three on these top three loops here. And then the ones that are rest, I think, just go a bit lower down. We'll work it out. So we have got six of the 10 provided guy lines attached to this. So I need to peg it out just to sort of see where we're going with it. So I need to make some pegs. So tool belt on, I've got an ax, which is held by my own little bit of leather work there. And I've got a Laplander saw by Baco, and that's my sheath that I made as well out of an old saddle. And then the knife that I made again with my own leather work get this on and make some pegs well we've got this lovely natural workbench here a really nice height for me to cut at so i'll just uh, chop this in two first just so it's a bit easier to handle And then I'm going to just start making some pegs. So if we go for about 10 to 12 inches. one two
So there we go, we've got a load of pegs made. And for all you poor Molly boffins, you'll be like saying, yeah, but those pegs aren't gonna work on this. Well, I'll show you firstly why they won't work. Let's pop those down. So they're absolutely fine on all the guy lines, obviously, not a problem whatsoever. But if I just show you here, so to pin it to the actual floor, you've got these little tiny eyelets here. Now, my pegs are not gonna fit through that. And with wood, you'd struggle to carve something that would pin this down, especially in bad weather. And this is why it comes with the metal pegs. But there's a way of overcoming this bit of paracord, make a loop, and then obviously you can pin through the paracord instead of this. There's always a way, you just have to work it out, that's all. So let's get it pinned out. So there it is, pretty much set up there. And it blends in really well. This green is a lovely color. It does come in like a sandy color as well, which is actually quite nice. But for the forest and any woodland, this green looks awesome. So there we go. And obviously the white guy lines, you could always swap those out and just use some green paracord if you wanted to keep it a little bit more stealth. But the best thing about this is it turns this tarp and your hammock setup into a hot tent. Simple. I just uh, peel this back. And just pin that up with a very simple little fastening. And then now we've got a place here for your flue to come out of. But obviously, potentially it's still gonna burn into this fabric. So it actually comes with this. And that is a heat proof mat with a bit of Velcro on which just sits on there perfectly, sorry that way around. So I'll pin that on and there we go. Your flue can pop out and even if, even if it leans against that, it doesn't matter whatsoever. So there we go, hot tenting. This is cool. So let's get in and have a quick look. I'll just pop you at this end. Stay there. Stay. So there we are. Look at the size of this. It's absolutely massive. So I set it about six foot three or four. I'm six foot. My head's just touching now but that's with a little bit of sag in the line. You could set it a little bit higher, but to be fair, this is about right, I would say. But the space in here is incredible. 
I mean, you've got space for this fire to go, so you can so slot your stove in there, flew out of that side. Tons of space at this side to have a party and lay all your stuff out. You know, you can swing a cat and a badger in here. First impressions, absolutely top notch, I've got to say. It is just lovely, just a really nice space. And if you were out in the woods for two or three days at a time, this would definitely keep you happy, especially in winter with the stove on. And that is the thing that I definitely need next to get a stove, especially when it comes to winter. And obviously you can cook in here and everything then. So yes, brilliant. You can shut up shop at one end, you can shut up shop at the other end, encase yourself in and you can bear the winter. No problem whatsoever. Yep, fantastic. Anyway, let's get the hammock in and we'll see what the space looks like then. And then we need to light a fire and get cooking. So as you can see, I've got the hammock set up down the middle here. And the space I've got is reduced, definitely. But you've got ample space at lower level. Obviously where I'm standing up here, I'm having to sort of bend over a little bit, but you only really need your hammock up when you're sleeping. So you can actually take this down and just get rid of it, coil it up at one side and then just pin it out and clip it on when you need it just to go to sleep. So really you've got a massive space to play with in here. You really do. Anyway, now everything's done, sleeping bags in, I've got a sleeping mat in there uh, and a pillow. I'm gonna now, Build a fire. I'll tell you what, I'm really enjoying this because there's so many variations you can have with this. So on this side, I've just pinned that out and that's just sort of forming like a, a traditional sort of V shape. This one at this side, I've just put some paracord on and I've attached further down here, just onto one of the eyelets. But obviously you can close it up and pin it together. You know, both ends are exactly the same. It's symmetrical apart from where the flue is. That's the only difference of it. But just fantastic. I mean, having this open space here to where my hammock is, I'm gonna have a fire just sort of sat where you are now. And at least, you know, from my hammock, I'm gonna be able to see that fire. So yeah, just brilliant. Really, really good.
So the method of cooking tonight is on this flame grilled. So I just need a way of supporting this over the top of the fire. So I've just nipped off and I've got some holly. Now holly is really good because often it does grow perpendicular out from the main sort of stem. So two sections like that hammered into the ground and this will simply sit on top. And then you've got a bit of adjustment with the width of it like that. So what to hold? Cuckoo. So if this is the first time you're watching my videos then you won't know what you're missing out on and that is the beautiful blue. He's my border collie sheepdog and he's just the most epic dog you'll ever see. Watch him in my other videos because he just honestly he's an absolute legend he really is and all my current subscribers pretty much most of them only watch the channel for blue so They've probably already turned off by now, so it might just be me and you guys. Anyway, don't tell him, but I have got a steak to cook tonight. So I'm just gonna marinate this in a little bit of oil and some smoky barbecue seasoning, and we'll get that on that fire. Also to go with that, look at these babies. Some massive mushrooms. Ooh. Also, we have a pepper. Some lovely vine tomatoes. And then I think I'm just gonna also add these uh, good grains. So just a, a few of those as well, just to bulk it out a little bit. So that is gonna be dinner. So I'm quite excited. I've got a bit of water, but that is all I've got. But I've also got my water filter. So if I need some more, I'll have to go get some more water. I can't really just survive on that because I'll need at least two cups of tea before the end of the night. So anyway, so while we're on, let's have a quick chat about these knives. So the ones that I generally take with me, I'll always take a decent sort of size bushcraft style knife. This is actually a Nesmuk one. If you can see that. And I made this one myself. We've got green liners, some stainless steel pins, and obviously a lanyard which uh, just helps just to give you a little bit extra to hold on to. But I love this knife, absolutely awesome. You can batter that around all over. The sheath that it goes into, I made myself as well. That's just out of an old horse saddle. So a simple little belt loop on it. But I love that one because straight away it just looks like it's 200 years old. The second one I've got is this one here. Again, I made the knife myself, but I made it to be more of like a neck knife. So I've actually just put a lanyard on the end of the actual sheath here, but potentially you could hang that upside down and then be able to access it like that and stab yourself back in the neck. <laughs> but this one fits like a glove and you can hear that click. So inside there, I've actually made it sort of clip in and it will not shake out at all. Rock solid in there. So this knife is a tiny sort of bushcraft style knife. If you can see that. I've just done it with white liners. But the actual material I've used is Corian. It's just an offcut of my kitchen work surface. So I actually use this around camp as my kitchen knife. 
Um, and it's just a, a small one, fits in three fingers, but I've got a decent lanyard, so your fourth finger wraps around that if you need. But again, it's solid enough to give it a good hammering, so pretty good one is that. The sheath again, I made out of an old saddle, but it just looks cool. I've just done two solid panels either side, so all the way around, it's just like two sheets. And then this one has just got a fold over just for a belt loop. But it looks cool that one, I really do like it. I um, might redo this one day and make a wooden handle, but I actually really like the Corian. It's smooth, easy to clean, and to be fair, it looks pretty cool. The best bit about this knife is though that click. The final knife that I generally bring with me is this tiny little neck knife here. Now this was made by a mate of mine and he's only made, I think there might be eight or ten in existence of these. So that's how rare they are. And I'll just click this open, but it is just a tiny little blade. And he calls this the spark. But it's just beautiful. This one is a bog wood, which is ancient, and it's got green liners. See if it'll focus on that. Probably not. And that's his little logo. His name is Firecraft UK, so check him out on Instagram. And I'm going to get him to make me a set of knives, which again will be super rare. Similar to this, maybe not identical because I like to add my twist to it, but I'm going to hopefully get a set of 10 or something made and then um, I will be able to sell those to you guys if you are interested in a super rare knife. And they are absolutely top quality, as good as you're going to get really. So there we go, that's my knives. Anyway, back to this cooking, eh? I really am starving now. <laughs> So a bit of oil and then I've got in here just some coarse ground black pepper, sprinkle a bit of that in, some salt, oh spilling it everywhere, good pinch of salt. And then this is a barbecue marinade, sweet and smoky. So I'm just gonna tear the corner off this. And just add a bit of that into that oil. And now it's time to get the steak out. Oh, I am so excited now. Just give that a shake around. I'll grab the steak. And let's just pop her in here. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing already. Wow, look at that. That's on the shit, isn't it? So while that's starting to cook, I'm going to put a bit more oil in this plate. I'm going to chop up some pepper, some nice big chunky bits of pepper. And we'll just marinate those again, give them a bit of a coating. And then I'll put some of this 
on the edges so it starts cooking as well. Next up, the giant mushrooms. They just look absolutely gorgeous. So again, I'm just gonna pop a bit of oil on from my little mini Nalgene bottle. Let all that oil soak into those. Oh, this is gonna be good. Almost got a bit of a coating again. I'll just try and get these on the fire as well. One, no space for two. Might have to come up with a plan B for that. Let me make a spike to uh, put it on. Oh, in fact, look at this. Look at this. You ready? Let's see if that'll go straight on there. Look at that, you can rotate it as well. Hey, that is thinking is that one. Right, let's give this steak a flip. Make a quick spatula, just to help me lift it over. <laughs> we'll call that jar grilled on that side. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes on the other side and that should be perfect. Right, let's speed this up a little bit and get these peppers in the pan. Last thing to add, a tomato. I'll pop that on. I've got another one as well, but I'm gonna save this, I think. Might just eat this raw. <coughs> Don't breathe. <coughs> I'm sure there's some of you like me that the smoke just follows. Well, this is looking delightful. And you can see there I've got the grains just in the plate, just gently warming them up with a little bit of water. But once they're sort of done, time to serve it up. Oh dear, the simple things do get you excited. So yeah, I'll give it a bit of a stir with this spoon and spatula that I made about, God, it must be 10 or 12 years ago. But it is still going strong. I could just occasionally give it a sand down and a, a re-oil. But yeah, it works quite well. So... That ain't too bad at all. Look at that. Wow. Look at that tomato. 
perfect, eh? Let's try these grins first. Wow, they're just good on their own. Mm. Right, let's get stuck into the real deal now. Steak first. Oh, wow. My God, that marinade is incredible. Got such a nice sweetness to it. And the steak just cuts through like a dream. Good. Really good. Try some mushroom next. Look at that. Wow, that cuts like the steak. No words for that, that is just... <laughs> I honestly just love cooking on a fire. Everything tastes amazing. Pepper next. A little bit charred on that side, but... Oh yeah. This is living the dream. And I always say it. Living the dream, but just for a short period of time. But why not get yourself outside and just, just do this, enjoy it. And eat tomatoes cooked on a fire, definitely. I mean, look at that. Well, I've just been and filled my kettle up from a little stream, so. Let's just find a spot to pop this on, melt it falling in. There we go, make a cup of tea, eh? But it's grand is this, absolutely grand, I love a fire. Yep, you can't really beat this. Sat in woods with a cup of tea by a fire. The only thing that could make this better is having Blue here. I've got to say I do really miss him. He has been on all my adventures with me, uh, pretty much, apart from if I'm in the kayak, that's the only thing. Yeah, my bluey dog. It's been nice though. I mean, just setting up this poor Molly uh, tarp tent thing is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think it's a very clever bit of kit. There might be a couple of adaptations I may do to it, but overall, I think it's a great setup, especially if you're coming out for two or three nights in the woods. It just gives you a really, really good base. So yes, impressed, definitely. I look forward to getting in that hammock and just testing out the space under that tarp. The fact that it comes down to the ground though, it just sort of almost reduces the amount of view you've got. So obviously you can have both ends opened up so you can see out both ends, 
But like normally when I'm in my hammock, the dog sleeps underneath me on a mat. And if anything's walking past at all, he just gives this real low level growl, which just alerts me to sort of know that I need to have a quick look out and see what's walking by. And usually it's a deer. So yeah, it's great having those extra eyes and ears. But the good thing about this tarp is the fact that it does come to the ground, just come winter in the snow or if it's raining, it'll just be fantastic to sort of lock yourself away with the stove on and do all your cooking and just keep yourself nice and warm really. So yeah, I look forward to uh, having the stove and utilizing that in colder times. Yeah, it's just awesome to be out, it really is. Anyway, I am going to finish my tea, just watch this fire die down and then I'm going to get myself to bed. So we will see thee in the morning. Cheers guys. Morning flowers. Well, last night was cold, proper cold. I wasn't expecting that at all. So yeah, having a rubbish mat with a really low R value def definitely doesn't help. I should have brought a better mat. Really what I should have done is taken my under quilt off my other hammock and used that. Hun under quilts always just keep me nice and toasty. But yeah, as soon as my back or my legs were off this mat and touching the side of the hammock then yeah just really chilly so I just concentrate on keeping on top of the mat as much as possible but I survived the night that's the main thing even though it wasn't the most comfortable so now I'm gonna get myself up and I think what I'll do is is just uh, play around while I've got this tarp up just with the configurations you can do just see what other positions it can be held in and yeah, it is interesting, definitely interesting. I like it. Yep, let's get up, get our bodies moving and get nice and warm again. Well, that's just one idea, just put a pole in and it just allows to open the side up totally. You could put one in the centre, which would be quite nice because then you'd have like a gable end sort of coming out this way and then pin both sides down. But it's just because it's such a big tarp, I think that's a, the best thing about it. And there's quite a lot of attachment points as well and they're all strong so you can, like I've done up here, you can see I've just uh, pulled the attachment point over the top of a little V-shaped stick and just pinned it down to the floor. Yeah, <laughs> versatility. You can adapt to whatever you need to adapt to when you're out there. And that is the good thing about it.
could play around all day with this. I've just moved the pole from over this side and put it in the middle. And then this just opens this front bit up here. So potentially you could have a fire down here and just sort of sit inside all facing the fire. But it's like Lego. You just do whatever you want with it. And just come inside. But yeah, just loads of space in here. You know, you can stand up, you know, plenty of space. You could easily fit. God, you could fit eight people in here, I reckon, just sort of all sat on this sort of back edge, get rid of the hammock, put that on one side. You could easily put a couple of hammocks in here as well. And then, if you didn't have a fire outside, we've still got this uh, place for putting the stove. So the flue will go out here, which is quite in the center of all this. And uh, I look forward to uh, getting a stove and trying it out really. It would be cool. Hot. So there we go, that is the Pomoli Lone Wolf 902 Tarp, designed to wrap around a hammock and it's got loads of attachment points and many variations of setup which is fantastic and first impressions for me are very good, I am impressed by it. Yep, it looks well in the woods definitely. Anyway, if you're interested in it, there is a link in the description. So just make sure you check that out. And they've got loads of other stuff like lightweight sort of camping stoves and things like that as well that you can have a look at and different tents. If you're interested in Bushcraft at all, then the Bushcraft show is coming up at the end of July. So check that out. They've got a website and you can book tickets online. It is awesome. I go every single year and I'll be there this year. So if you see me there, definitely come and say hi. And Blue will be with me too, so you can give the dog a good fuss. Also, I've got some special edition merch coming out, which is a woodland merch, we'll call it. And that is designed by myself. It looks cool already, it really does. And um, hopefully it'll be out in time for you guys to buy a few items before we get to the Bushcraft show. So it'll be nice to see you there wearing it. Um, it is going to be limited stock, so instead of special edition, maybe we'll call it the limited edition. But it, it's, yeah, it's going to be cool. If you're interested in any of the kit that I use, there's probably a link in the description down below, so go check that out as well. So, if you have liked the video, let's give it one of those massive fat thumbs up. And if you want to contribute towards the channel at all, you can buy me a coffee through the buy me a coffee link in the description. And also there is a Patreon set up. So if you'd like to come and join that community, you can do so also. <sighs> anyway, it has been a complete pleasure. I love coming out into the woods and I look forward massively to the Bushcraft show. So let's hope I can see you there. Take care then guys, let's get packed up.